to the Writing Talk podcast with Mikey Campling. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Writing Talk podcast with me, Mikey Campling. And it's really nice to be here with you today because we have made it to double figures at long last. Uh, it's taken me a little while, but here we are at episode 10. So let's crack on. Episode 10 is called Where is the Metaphor? Now I'm trying to take you through here in a fairly sequential order of putting a piece together from a last few episodes with kind of as I relaunched it with I think episode eight we're trying to follow through fairly sequentially so here we are thinking about a new piece of work whether it's a short piece or a full-length novel or whatever and I would like to think about what is the really massive challenge in front of you is it thinking about characters or plot and so on no I don't think any of those I think really it is the storytelling itself it's that simple and it's that difficult. It is a huge hurdle, really, to tell a really good story. And without that, I don't think any of the other stuff that we do as writers really matters very much. What we're here to do is tell a great story on the whole. So what does that really mean in terms of putting our piece together? Well, I think it's far too easy to write a collection of scenes or a collection of little snippets of life, you know, little slices of life, um, I think Ray Bradbury has, has called them. And that's where I really got, I borrowed the title from Ray Bradbury. He's talking about where's the metaphor in a lot of people's short fiction, particularly. And I think you can probably see what, you mean, what I mean if you look at a lot of contemporary fiction. You will see sometimes long rambling screeds of scenes that are interesting in a way it's like a bit of voyeurism almost looking over somebody's shoulder into a little slice of their life but ultimately it can seem a bit empty a bit flat um, and often that's a problem with our writing we get carried away with imagining a scene and we want to describe it all in loving detail for the reader whether it really plays a part in the story or not so uh, these are the things that we sometimes need to look for and cut them right out even that even if they're beautifully written, you know, with this lovely prose, if they're not really contributing to the story, then there's really no point in being there. So how do we go about making something a really good story and not just a collection of scenes or a collection of events or a collection of snippets? Well, I would argue that, like Ray Bradbury, who knows much more about this than me, it's the idea of a metaphor or a theme, an underlining theme or metaphor of the piece that really helps. Now, it might seem like that's the kind of thing, like quite an advanced topic that you might think about later, or the kind of thing perhaps people deal with in English literature classes. But I'm not talking about that kind of picking apart a piece of prose, which is a good tongue twister if you can say it, to pick apart a piece, I can't say it now, pick apart a piece of prose and, you know, tease out every little element in there that could be metaphorical or allude to some theme or other. I'm talking about an underlying theme which you should have at front of mind when you're putting this piece of work together because some kind of underlying theme or metaphor in your piece is going to be the bones of your story. It's really what everything else is going to hang from. And part of telling that tale is to illuminate that metaphor as you go through. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, you might say, well, actually... I write something thinking one thing and then when I've finished I look at it and realise I've actually written on another theme altogether and it's almost sort of seeped out of my unconscious. Well, yes, that happens. That, I think that happens to, to everybody. Um, people say you always end up writing about yourself and your own life no matter what you try and do. And I think, yeah, things will seep into it. So there will be other themes in there perhaps and other metaphors that will will emerge as you write. But even so... I think to make a satisfying story, we need to have this idea of an, a unifying theme, if you like. Now, there may be several, but certainly for, say, if there's a character's arc going through it, then what is their journey and, and how is that in some way a metaphor for our own lives? Because that's kind of what we are looking at when we're reading or we're enjoying uh, a movie or a drama on the TV or the radio or enjoying a really good novel. We are sort of subconsciously relating all that to our own lives, I think, and to the lives of those around us. And that's where this kind of 
I don't, I'm not sure if even metaphor is the right word, but it's the nearest I can come to it. It's almost like uh, an, an analogy in some way between the things we're reading about or, or watching and the things that we've experienced for ourselves. So how do we go about evaluating whether we're doing a good job in this, putting our story together with some sort of sense of metaphor or theme? Well, what we're looking for is a sense that what is happening in your piece is in some way significant. It feels significant. Um, and really what it comes down to is why should we read your piece? What's in it for us? How will it feel significant to us? Will it add value to our lives by reading it? Will it make us feel satisfied in some way? Will it make us laugh, make us cry? Will it make us think? That kind of reaction is what we're looking for. And that's quite a subtle and a very difficult thing to achieve. But it won't happen by accident on the whole, not in a very uniform way. It might happen piecemeal by accident if you're lucky, but it could also be the thing that defeats your story or your piece and makes it sort of fall apart in some way. We could be following through with you, you know, along with a character living at the story along with them, and then suddenly, you know, that you lose us. And perhaps you've looked, I'm sure I have, perhaps you've looked at your writing and thought, okay, this was going really well here. There was something right about it that I enjoyed. And now it's sort of gone stale or some, somehow flat. It's not moving me in the same way. And probably what it is, is that you've, without realising it, you've veered away from whatever it was that was uh, holding your piece together in terms of metaphor or theme. Now, that doesn't mean you should totally um, overthink it. You are probably excited about writing your piece for a, some personal reason of your own. And for some reason some reason that story is trying to grab your attention and if you listen to that little voice inside you that is telling you there's something here that really wants to be heard a story that wants to be told then that's what you need to tune in on it's what you need to adapt your ear to listen for your inner ear to sort of focus on yeah there is something really interesting there now what is it what, what's really going on here similarly uh, while we don't want you to overthink it, you don't want to be too heavy handed. You don't want to bash us over the head constantly with the, the theme going, hey, it's me over here. I'm the writer. I'm writing about loss here. You know, I'm writing about some sort of anxiety of separation or, you know, don't bash us over the head with it. The really great um, writers will hint at that and they will, it will just be subtle. And, you know, sometimes you finish a really good book and you kind of even if you haven't particularly enjoyed it, sometimes it's in the back of your mind for like a week afterwards and you're sort of thinking, oh, actually, you know, yeah, maybe he was saying this or maybe she was saying that. And you start to wonder about it. Same with a great, great movie or watching an interesting play or anything like that. Those ones that come back to haunt you, it's often something in the back of your, your mind is has tuned into the underlying meanings of, of what was going on. And you've suddenly, you know, you dredge them up over the next few days. It's quite an interesting thing. It's quite hard to do deliberately. I think all we can do is try to develop our ear for it, look for it um, and nurture it, you know, sort of encourage it along. Um, and as I say, just keep thinking, what is it that is grabbing my attention about this story? What do I want to explore? What do I want to delve into? And, you know, make that real for us. Just just play with it. Um, introduce it to us gently and perhaps go away from it a little bit and keep coming back to it you know but never lose sight of it that's the thing try and keep it in the back of your mind and that'll be when you you know you finish your chapter or your piece and you look at it and you sort of have a sigh a satisfied sigh and think yeah that that works that's good I enjoyed that um, and hopefully that's how your readers will then feel as well so I would say to you at this point if we are thinking of putting together a new piece just spend some time thinking why you want to write this. What are you going to get out of it? Um, what are you going to explore? Scribble some ideas down. I think it's fine to be vague at this point. Absolutely no need for masses of detail. But just, you know, you have a feeling, a sense that there's something significant you want to explore. And that will prevent you from writing a piece that's sort of um, incoherent or that could just be described as kind of bubble gum for the eyes, you know, something with a bit of significance and meaning. Okay, uh, there's a little quote here from Ray, Rad <laughs> Ray Bradbury, uh, which I'll just do in my own accent, really, rather than um, slaughter an American accent on you today. 
So here's something that he says. Do you know why teachers use me? Because I speak in tongues. I write metaphors. Every one of my stories is a metaphor you can remember. The great religions are all metaphor. We appreciate things like Daniel and the lion's den and the Tower of Babel. People remember these metaphors because they are so vivid you can't get free of them. And that's what kids like in school. They read about rocket ships and encounters in space, tales of dinosaurs. All my life I've been running through the fields and picking up bright objects. I turn one over and say, yeah, there's a story. And that's what kids like. Today my stories are in a thousand anthologies and I'm in good company. The other writers are quite often dead people who wrote in metaphors. Edgar Allan Poe, Herman Melville, Washington Irving, Nathaniel Hawthorne. All these people wrote for children. They may have pretended not to, but they did. And what I like about that quote is it's just, yeah, it's that, it's that simple. It's almost a childlike simplicity to it. And it sounds so easy to say, yes, OK, writing should have some kind of metaphor or theme or underlying sense of significance. Really, really hard to do, really hard to achieve. And so, yeah, I, I can see how what Ray Bradbury's um, trying to say there and, and relate to that. OK, um, I would love to hear any comments you may have. And if you've enjoyed it, please let me know. Um, please feel free to share it around. I'm really trying to keep this going every week. I'm sorry I've been a bit haphazard with the days it's coming out on. Um, today's being a Monday perhaps I'll try and stick to Mondays for a while and see if that works because the other days I've tried haven't really so far I'd like to get one out every week and I hope you find something of use or something to think about at least and perhaps you know you can go away and, and think about it um, please let me know please share it around if you're in any writers groups or anything like that or on Facebook or anything please feel free to share episodes about because it'd always be nice to have some more subscribers and some more listeners Anything you want to ask as well, uh, leave comments on the uh, the page where there's always some brief show notes, so like the quote and things from Ray Bradbury and stuff like that from today, for instance. You can see, which is writingtalkpodcast.com and writingtalkpodcast is all one word. Okay. Occasionally, I like to just put a little writing prompt on here. It would be great if people would uh, put stuff on the comments to link back to if, if they've done this, but perhaps not. You know, it hasn't really happened so far. So if you do one, you'll have... My, well, I think we've had one so far, which is wonderful. But, you know, you'll have my undivided attention, I guess, if you do. <laughs> and might even get a shout out. Who, who knows? But I'm just... It's quite nice just to provide some writing prompts every now and then for people to use purely for your own use if you like so don't feel obliged to share it in any way okay so here's a little one um just a, a, for a short piece of no more than say a thousand words with the theme of the word missing so just the theme of missing which you can take any way you wish for example one person could be missing someone as in longing for another person or it could be an object or a person goes missing or it could be that something like a target or a goal is is missed you know, it could be 101 different ways of looking at that. And have a play around with that. Um, just base it around a single character. Rather than in a thousand words, that's all you've really got room for, I think. Think about a character and ex explore that idea with him. Try not to, or her, sorry. Uh, invent your own character. Otherwise, I can provide one for you. Think of a man whose first name is Scott and he's 53 years old. There you are. There's a, a ready-made character for you to muck about with. So really, first few sentences, you're just bringing the character in and hinting at their lives and their past, something to give us a bit of a hook to hang the rest of the story on. You then go ahead and develop a character through their actions and end the story with some sort of climax or, or resolution in totally your own way. And as you do that, ask yourself where the metaphor is, where, where is the message of the story? Where is its fundamental underlying truth, if that doesn't sound a bit uh, highbrow and highfalutin? Um, you know, what is the underlying truth of that? Is it, And is it relating to the theme of missing? OK, that's an, an optional little writing quote for you. Uh, it could be a little exercise you do. And, you know, I, I say it's optional because, which of course it is, but I mean, <laughs> uh, I can't come around there and force you to, much as I'd like to set your homework. But not everybody likes to share. 
exercises that they do. You have to be quite brave sometimes to share an exercise. I think it's worth doing, you know, sharing. Don't be scared of showing your work. I think it's always good. Uh, nobody's saying it's going to be perfect. OK, well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, you can find me at writingtalkpodcast.com for the notes and links and so on. And you can subscribe from there in various ways. Um, Stitcher should be fine. I think I'm having a problem with my iTunes feed. It seems to want to have deleted me and having a hard time getting them to put me back. And also on Spreaker.com. And there's a Facebook page and so on as well, which you might want to follow along from there. And you can find me for other things and more about my work at MikeyCampling.com. And I'm very easy to find. You can find my work on Amazon, for instance, uh, just by looking for Mikey Campling. Although it does sometimes tell you about Mickey Mouse camping equipment for some reason. <laughs> OK, thanks again for listening and take care. Uh, keep writing, keep tapping away at the keys and keep smiling. Oh,